Hello, I'm David Putnam. I, for many, many years, was a filmmaker, and you're about to have a series of pretty important conversations. I thought it might help if I asked myself just four questions and tried to supply answers. The first is, what are the key issues for an independent producer in terms of changes, possible changes, to DSM? Well, I think far and away the most important is, can legislation, can the marketplace be corrected in such a way as to make it easier, not harder, to raise risk finance for movies. There is a very real concern that by imposing a kind of one-size-fits-all distribution mechanism across Europe, the flexibility of being able to get good money, good advances, enthusiastic distributors committed to individual movies in individual marketplaces will be lost. If we lost that, we'd lose a lot. The issue is, can it be substituted by the emergence of vigorous, bigger, more risk-taking distributors who prepare to, as it were, become part, more part and parcel of the development of European cinema. If that could be the result, and it would take time, but if that could be the result of uh, changes in legislation, changes in approach by the Commission, then that, I think, on balance, would be a good thing. But there is a real fear of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, as we say in the UK, or the slippery slope, the possibility that the best of intentions could actually result in making it harder and harder at an already quite difficult time to get smaller, more interesting European ground films financed and distributed. If that happened, I think we'd, we'd all regret the changes we've made. The second question obviously relates to copyright. What are the possibilities and what are the limitations imposed by changes to the copyright regime? Well, I've got a bit of, a, a bit of history here and a bit of an obsession. I am desperately keen to get the, the rigorous aspects of copyright enforcement, particularly when it comes to stills and movies, uh, removed from the classroom. I want teachers in classrooms to feel that they are free to use materials, whatever materials they can lay their hands on, if that's a way of enhancing the interest of their, of their students and the impact of their classes. Teaching is a tough profession. You need all the help you can get. And the truth is that the audiovisual world has, over the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years, thrown up extraordinary resources. There's a kind of absurdity in the notion that those resources should be unavailable to improve and enhance classroom teaching. So I would love to see a regime whereby the world of education, the world of the classroom, is removed from the restrictions that apply uh, in the rest of the, of the commercial marketplace. It must be possible. I've never yet met a politician who doesn't regard it as desirable. Uh, it just needs a big legislative push to make it happen, and I hope it does. Third. An obvious question is, in what ways can the development of digital technology help in the distribution and, and, gener and the ability to generate audiences for European films? Um, I think there are a number of ways. We've already seen some in the distribution costs, in theory, have been brought down. They're no longer lumbered with the extraordinary print costs that dominated my life for 30 years. I mean, it's quite extraordinary. When I left the film industry, I was still looking through pieces of celluloid with sprocket holes. Uh, that has gone. Unfortunately, some of the conditions under which that transition to digital occurred uh, haven't been as fair on filmmakers as they might have been, haven't even been as fair, I don't think, on distributors as they might have been. And I'd look for the marketplace being re rebalanced. There is still a, a case where a lot of distributors, distributors are continuing to pay for uh, costs which have long since been uh, amortised. And uh, that needs to be looked at and, and, and adjusted. But there are other ways. The, obviously, the opportunity to digitally promote movies, the access of websites and the amount of interest you can generate from a YouTube clip uh, are very, very new and things that literally didn't exist but a few years ago. So the opportunity to look across the market and see ways in which uh, the, the digital world can improve access to and revenue generation buy movies uh, is, is colossal. The other thing I'd like to see happen, this may be a bit wishful thinking, is somehow to get what I call the bottom feeders, that's to say the people at, at Amazon and, and YouTube, uh, not so much YouTube, and um, Apple, who sell uh, downloads and make very good money out of the movie business, to see them move up the value chain, to see them becoming part of the risk profile of the business. It would be very good to feel that when you were creating your advertising budget, 
and trying to promote a movie in a, in a very difficult uh, commercial environment, that some or other, those revenues were participating in making that possible. So I'd like to see the, um, the, the Amazons of the world, the Apples of the world, begin to be part of the risk profile, the real risk profile uh, of the film industry. This could be in the form of investing, obviously, in original programming, but it could also be literally in the form of, of underwriting some of the um, advertising costs. The promotion advertising costs for most movies now are becoming utterly prohibitive. And unless you've got a blockbuster, unless you've got a blockbuster, the chances of making an impact on the marketplace with the kind of money that's affordable are very limited. So those revenues would come in extremely welcome. My last point is just uh, a personal thought. If we could create consolidation in the marketplace, if it were possible to get European distributors talking to each other, working together far more closely, I think that would be a very good thing. I am concerned that the distribution business in uh, Europe is very largely a kind of, it's a family business. It's a, a, they're in a sense, small shops in a big marketplace. So I think consolidation uh, consolidation supported by the right kind of cons uh, legislation exactly the same way that we in the UK did it with um, with television programming in the uh, in the 2002 2003 uh, with with extraordinary effects if we could create consolidation in the marketplace and therefore give the average European film or the above average European film a real shot at competing with its very well funded American uh, competitors that would be I wouldn't say it'd be Naverna but it would be an enormous move in the right direction. How you achieve it, I'm not sure, but I'm absolutely convinced that within the European Commission, the levers do exist and the resources do exist to make this an attractive proposition. And I hope those are investigated. And who knows, we might surprise ourselves with the results. Thanks for listening to me. Those are just a few thoughts that might stimulate discussion. Uh, I wish I were with you, but uh, that simply wasn't possible. Bye-bye.